Hey, Conan O'Brien here, and you are listening to episode two, the lost Hans and Franz movie, discussing a, a script that was written in 1991 by Dana Carvey, Kevin Nealon, Robert Smigel, and myself. It was our dream to bring Hans and Franz <laughs> to the big screen as a musical. We wrote the script, and here we are after all these years, bringing it to life. We all know that this is gonna lead to the movie actually being made. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, mm -hmm. so I'm clearing my schedule for the summer. For a budget of $100,000. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be on streaming. You'll see, it's gonna be great. <laughs> you know, in the last episode, we talked a little bit about how Hans and Franz came to be. And I think this is important before we start this, reading the next uh, parts of the script. Kevin, it all began with you seeing Arnold Schwarzenegger doing an interview and you were kind of enjoyed doing his voice. You called Dana, the two of you, you were out on the road together with Dennis Miller. Hey, cha-cha. And you were, uh, <laughs> <laughs> looks just... like Cozy Wonsy gave me a pluggy walkie. Um, you two were on the road together uh, and you started doing these two guys, but mm -hmm. you were still, you didn't quite see how it could be a character yet. And then Dana, you said there was a point where there was an important yeah, revelation. We, we played with it. We had the core, I think that they would maybe be the cousins and maybe- Of Schwarzenegger. Of Arnold and worship Arnold. We had that. Distant cousins. But we were trying to think of the characters, like what would they be? And we were going around with like, are they actually gonna lift weights? Like, are they gonna show that they're strong? And we were probably thought not, but what would they do? So I'm talking with Kevin. And first we were just on the phone doing it. We want to pump you up. We thought, okay, let's do that. And then Kevin, we were just riffing around like this and that. And then Kevin said, I'll never forget it because it really, it tilted the whole thing. And if you don't believe we're properly pumped up, once we got defensive, yeah. then we laughed for two hours on the phone. <laughs> if, you, right. if you doubt me in any way, you know, <laughs> and they would never lift weights. So I think in the first- <laughs> The, the first they never sketch, demonstrated their strength. Never, there's Just no strength. Just berated the audience. They, they, yeah. All they did, a paranoid, delusional, sadistic, aggressive of, toward imaginary enemies, and that was their whole thing. That's why I don't think the first one or two really scored. The first one is unbelievably funny. If but, you watch it now. But the, the audience got hooked it harder as it went along. To, yeah, of course. Mind. Yeah. Well, I mean, what that's happened, almost every character, yeah. right? The first well, Wayne's yeah. World wasn't well, a, a giant hit. Either. I guess so. it was just the, how abstract it was. It, they're never going to show any. Like we did the first one, we set it up and it got an okay thing. It was the and last then, sketch of the show. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, we didn't do it for a couple weeks. I said, Dana, we should do another one of those and see if, uh, and then we put it out there and it was like, you know, it was like, yeah, it that people loved it, yeah. you know. Eventually we had the whole crowd going, we want to pop and then the whole 8H. Yes. Yes. And we go, yes. yeah. You know what I used to love about? We start counting money backstage. I think more so, <laughs> more so back then, that era of SNL, everybody was always on the hunt for a catchphrase. And I remember very clearly, and there was some, you know, pump you up. I could see you guys thinking, what's the catchphrase gonna be? <laughs> right. Yeah, everything everything gets wound down into, we want to pump you up to, we want to pump you up. We had to stop, because I was it's gonna- It's like a chef with a reduction. You keep cooking it until it just becomes this syrup. It's like the Bush thing, not gonna do it, not gonna do it. Not yeah, yeah, well, we we watched you do, uh, the whole arc of George, of George Bush was mm -hmm. you starting out saying, not gonna do it. Mm -hmm. And then over time, it came, da, da, da. like, oh. Ga, 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 ga. He's, da, had, a, da, da. he's was, had a horrible da. stroke. Yeah. It went like this. Not ga, da, ga, 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 da, go. <laughs> <laughs> Combining two catchphrases. It's a living. What can I tell you, folks? It's a living. It's a hey, living. Hey, I'm waking here. So uh, mm -hmm. we're gonna get back into it now. Uh, as you last remember, Hans and Franz, they lose their job at their cable television show because they uh, refer to Dr. Martin Luther King as being flabby. <laughs> um, they're fired. They ride out on tandem bikes and they get to Hollywood. They're hoping to meet their, their cousin Arnold. So we take you now. Let's get Arnold in here. Let's get Arnold in here. Yeah, yeah. Let's we need Let's Arnold. get him in here. I'm okay. here, let's get to work. This is, let's here we go. go. Let's do this. Reduced to eating letters of the Hollywood sign for sustenance. <laughs> Pennyless Hans and Franz have no luck finding their cousin in Los Angeles until they are arrested for tackling Arnold at one of his movie premieres. Arnold bails them out of jail and allows them to crash at his house. Meanwhile, Rolf continues to kidnap girly men. Exterior Arnold's house day, a huge sprawling estate 
Arnold's Humvees drive past two large flexed metal arms which serve as the gate. <laughs> Interior Arnold's foyer moments later, a very pumped manservant takes everyone's <laughs> bag as they enter. Thanks, Benny. Make yourselves comfortable, fellas. <laughs> the house is decorated with large sculptures of individual muscles. Wow. Great place. Yeah, it's good for now. <laughs> as they follow Arnold into the living room, they cross a staircase made up of 15 connecting stairmasters, ascending to the next level. <laughs> the living room furniture is also shaped like different muscles. This room's where I like to unwind. <laughs> yeah, Arnold, before we forget, we got some stuff for you from back home. They pull some junk out of a knapsack. We brought you your mail. Hans hands Arnold some old junk mail. Uh, yeah. Thanks. And also... He pulls a beat-up dirty sausage out of his knapsack. Your favorite sausage which Grandma cooked for you. Ah, uh, uh-huh. Uh, that's nice. Uh, thanks. Thanks, guys. Arnold reaches over and opens a cabinet. <laughs> a digital monitor reads out 14 calories burned. Arnold pulls out a cigar and lights it. Let me show you the rest of the place. Arnold gets up. Hans and Franz trail him. Uh, sure, sure, uh, sure, I'd love to. Uh, Arnold, can I use the bathroom, please? Sure. Go down to the bicep, make a left at the buttock. <laughs> Thanks. Hans <laughs> continues to follow Arnold. Here, come with me. Arnold's backyard moments later, they cross the swimming pool, a narrow lap pool that stretches a mile into the horizon. <laughs> there is a yacht in the deep end. Pool. Nice. nice. Yeah, yeah that was good. Yes, yeah, I like it. Pool. Beautiful pool. Yeah, they, can, pool. <laughs> they continue to follow Arnold <laughs> elsewhere. Pool. He leads them through a secret passageway, a giant, <laughs> a giant buttocks. That separates and opens like a door. <laughs> Arnold's basement moments later. It is a complex underground nerve center, not unlike the war room in Dr. Strangelove. Here's where it all happens, fellas. I make every career move in this room. A team of advisors is studying a giant tabletop chart, pushing around a small cardboard cutout heads of Sylvester Stallone, Chuck Norris, Jean-Claude Van Damme, Kevin Costner, etc. Hans and Franz are very impressed. Show business is like a war. You must always anticipate the enemy's next move. Arnold turns to Howard, an agent in an Italian suit. How's it looking for the Pride of the Yankees remake? Costner met with them today. Blow him out. I was meant to play Lou Gehrig. Come, come. Arnold turns and leads Hans and Franz to another wing where scientists and lab coats are studying x-rays, muscles, and skeletal charts. Who are these people, Arnold? Muscle research. You can't forget pompitude. It's my bread and butter. A scientist approaches Arnold. Any new exercises, Courtney? <laughs> you know this little bump on the inside of your elbow? It's technically a ligament, but we think it can be made thicker with inverted curls. Good. Add it to my routine. Come over here, fellas. They walk over to a machine that resembles a sleek version of an old steam box. <laughs> this machine removes all hair from your body, so you're ready for competition. A hairy <laughs> Italian bodybuilder in Speedo trunk steps into the machine, which makes whirling and buzzing sounds. Thanks, Franco. <laughs> I want to give something back to the bodybuilding community. <laughs> the machine stops. The Italian bodybuilder steps out, hairless from the neck down. <laughs> He checks under his Speedo and gives a thumbs up. Arnold moves on to a private alcove. He is my real pride and joy. He presses a button on the wall. A sliding door opens, revealing a gleaming rectangular metal box. For years, man has been poisoning his body with unsafe chemicals in his mad quest for bulk. Soon, the madness will end with my new, totally safe, anabolic bulk enhancer. Wow. wow. And man will finally realize his dream to go from this. He refers to a photo of an enormous bodybuilder with bulging muscles. To this. He refers to a photo of the same bodybuilder doctored to look three times as muscular. <laughs> it's a truly disgusting sight. Oh, oh, oh my God. God. Nice, it's unbelievable. So beautiful. It's a shiny Ooh, yeah, muscles. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Oh, let me touch. Yeah, yeah. it comes as a cracker. <laughs> <laughs> Arnold a opens classic the Classic Conan joke. I love that. It comes as a cracker. Arnold <laughs> opens the metal box, revealing rows of round crackers. Franz reaches for one. Arnold slaps his wrist. Not yet. The crackers haven't been perfected. <laughs> now, let's go. And remember, don't tell anyone. They leave the alcove and are intercepted by Howard. 
Arnold, I know you have guests, but... Right, fellas, uh, this is my agent, Howard. Hello, girly man. Jan, nice to meet you, Flavie Person. Howard gives Hans and Franz a look. They smile, oblivious. I remember uh, we would get so excited about uh, jokes where it was very flat. Him talking about all that, that wondrous thing, and then saying something like, it's a cracker. It comes as a cracker. As comes well, as that cracker. was totally your joke. But but yeah. but, but, but just, yeah, yeah. The, just the idea that then Arnold has to say cracker. <laughs> cracker. <laughs> it's a great Arnold word. Cracker. Hearing the real Arnold do this would have been just incredible. Yeah, we would have just, done anything just to have the table Arnold read. would have been, exactly. is going to be when we remake it. So funny. In this movie, because the visual gig through the house, that whole thing is plays. Oh, so no, there fun. was a whole scene. Remember the scene where Arnold's on the phone and mm -hmm. he's doing like he's multitasking. He's doing like 20 things at once yeah. and controlling because he was such an enormous star. Yeah. At oh, this yeah. time mm -hmm. that we were able to just exaggerate not only his fame, but also his just like he was like a superhero within yes. the movie. Like, yeah. And yeah. We, we had lunch with him at uh, was it Shop 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 yeah, yeah. And Shotsies, he, uh, and, and to this, talk about this movie. Yeah, we yeah, had right. one meeting with him, mm -hmm. and I'll just set the table, which is down in Venice. Yes. There was a restaurant called Shotsies yes. that I think Arnold owned. He, did. he, he bought and, it for his mother. Yeah, and it was um, mm -hmm. you could get like true? Austrian food there. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you know, just as a side note, I think who used to sometimes frequent that little area it was sort of an outdoor kind of mini mall area. And Shotzi's was there. And um, I later heard from Rick Ludwin that Johnny Carson used to go there. And nope. he would meet Johnny Carson at that same place. Huh. Yeah. Rick would meet Johnny Carson yeah, at would, Shotzi's? Would, yeah, at Shotzi's. And Arnold, Shotzi's was this uh, what's, place uh, where- What's on the appetizer <laughs> list in that time? <laughs> but you know uh, what? Uh, <laughs> this is what I heard from Rick Ludwin, a good friend of, of ours going back years on SNL and the Late Night Show. Yes. He mm -hmm. said that he was having one of his meetings with Johnny Carson, who was retired but like mm -hmm. still just a, just this huge legendary figure. Yeah. And he's sitting there at Shotzi's with Rick Levin and they're having a lunch and um, Arnold came by and it was a whole thing like, we miss you, Johnny. You know, it was all about, you've got to come back on television. And Johnny was, <laughs> That'd you know. Be very like, him. Oh, oh. oh, thank you very much, but I'm having a good time on my boat. <laughs> I, uh, I think. Uh, he's having a good time on his boat. <laughs> <laughs> Leno, how did you get here? Alex well, and I, well, we well, watched. What are you bothering Johnny for? Leave <laughs> <laughs> Johnny alone. You came oh, out of the. I'm Arnold Schwarzenegger, and I'm going to tell Johnny what to do. <laughs> you don't tell Johnny what to do. What are you doing? Leave him alone. What did he come out of the heat vent? He was listening in. <laughs> yeah, I'm from everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, I was just in the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> I went to that place once. I met him there once without you guys. Mm -hmm. and Arnold? The, yeah. And at the end, he's like, okay, time for cigars and schnapps. And he had a cigar cutter, and then you had to do a shot of schnapps. This was you do, at the, end, to do it. at the end of a meal. It's but like an uh, exclamation so, type so point. So we should talk about this, because we did have a meeting with Schwarzenegger. Yes. We all went, and yes. I remember there was a, some other people there too, obviously, some agents and- Normally you'd have Austrian parasites. friends around, like yeah. big, burly, Not, uh, long really? guys. Yeah, what I, In this case, it was just uh, agents and things Yeah, like and that. I didn't remember having any interaction with them other than, hi, fellas. I mean, I think he talked well, we to you guys. We sat at a table. Yeah, we yeah. sat at a table, yeah, yeah. but I'm saying- Do you remember- I, I remember him talking about I remember about the junior. first thing he said. First thing he said, what? you guys have gone crazy with the Pyrex giant buttocks opening and closing. I remember he went oh, so to that So he had part, read it, he had read it. Or at least enough of it, but he mentioned that Once with he, got, he, was, he was excited at that point. And yeah. then he was just telling us about his other projects. And yeah, I'm gonna be a, I play a pregnant guy and it's really <laughs> touching and heartwarming. You know, cause I go through and I understand what women go through and the comedies because a man, you know, traditionally doesn't have a belly from being pregnant. Exactly. But you see because a man I like that, that he gets into it because a man doesn't have a uterus. <laughs> you see, see. Yeah. He does right. not have he ovaries a and uterus. You know the thing that you use to urinate? <laughs> yeah. That's what it, yeah. women don't have that. <laughs> Men only. But that's, and then, that's he brought, right. out, then he brought out a diagram. That was weird. He Let me tell it. you something. I'm the only man who's pregnant that has a six pack over the belly of the little child. <laughs> <laughs> Even the child has a six pack inside. It's my six pack would crush the child. But we, Is there uh, any chance Arnold, like three months from now, is driving down the road listening to this? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. You know, maybe we go back revisit it. 
My dream would just be for him to do a live reading with us and just do it for charity. That would be amazing. or for us or for us just for money. Or, yes. we, or, or, or we say it's for charity. We say it's for charity yes. and then we pocket the money. Yeah, yeah. That's I've done that many times, and people <laughs> people rarely look into they it. They don't know. There's don't no know. forensic audit. That's a <laughs> that's that's a lie. Steve Martin had a great joke. Steve Martin did a charity. He goes, "Congratulations, you've raised." $500,000 minus my salary. <laughs> <laughs> so that's $200 for the kids. All right, we're going to go back to it now. And uh, here we go. Interior Arnold's house, kitchen. Ah, uh, what are you fellas cooking? Glutzen Schatzel. Yeah, we figured it was our last night. Glutzen Schatzel? Franz pierces a piece with a fork and timidly offers it to Arnold. Arnold eyes it cautiously, then tastes it. My God, it's just how I tasted in the old country. <laughs> Arnold, how come you never talk about the old country? It's not the most pleasant memory. Believe me now. Let it out. I was a happy child. But it wasn't easy for my family. Dissolved to exterior the old country marketplace 30 years ago. <laughs> Poverty-stricken villagers exchange sparse items. Some children are lifting tiny weights. <laughs> it was during the war. Food and weights were hard to come by. <laughs> <laughs> Families struggled to stay pumped. <laughs> Which war was it, Arnold? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> the war. <laughs> so many. Dissolved to water's edge later, young Arnold, age 15, with flowing locks in later hose and hugging his family. I loved my simple life, but I was too massive for my family to support. So in desperation. Exterior ocean. Later, young Arnold floating in a giant bottle across the ocean. <laughs> they sent me to the States, the only way they could afford to. Promising they join me later. Exterior Ellis Island Day, young Arnold online with tons of other immigrants. Still, I felt abandoned. And then, on Ellis Island, I was humiliated. Young Arnold steps up to the immigration booth. They shortened my name. A rude clerk is in the booth. <laughs> What's your name, son? <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger Schlatzen Klausen Jammerstein. <laughs> okay, forget it. Now you're Schwarzenegger. Young Arnold is stunned. He walks away slowly, then stops. I had nothing left, so I told myself I'd never look back. Dissolved to interior Arnold's office, day 1979. Pan the wall. Posters of Arnold as Mr. Olympia, Arnold in Pumping Iron, Arnold as Conan, the Barbarian, etc. I focused on my career, and it paid off. A 70s Arnold receives a phone call. Then one day, I got a call from Little Austria. My grandpapa was sick. I thought I'd finally make amends. Exterior Little Austria, church, day. Morning villagers are gathered outside. A <laughs> casket emerges from the entrance. Arnold is the lone pallbearer, carrying the casket by one handle. He is downcast. But I was too late. He sadly does a rep with the <laughs> casket. <laughs> Exterior, Arnold's pool, same. Hans and Franz are taking it in. We never knew, Arnold. We never knew. Yeah, yeah. You can never get it back, fellas. Arnold, how about a doozle schnapps? <laughs> you guys brought doozle schnapps? Mm. We raided Grandmama's yeah. liquor cabinet. Yeah. I don't know, fellas. Exterior Arnold's pool later. All three are drunk, giggling hysterically and joking in German <laughs> as they laugh. Oh, he frightened me. Yeah, me too. What about Pompey? I do it because I'm insecure. Yeah, 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 yeah that's why I do it. <laughs> I love you guys. You're such losers. Yeah. Yeah. Don't leave tomorrow, okay? Uh, Arnold starts an Austrian drinking song and Hans and Franz join in. <laughs> it's really fun to imagine the real Schwarzenegger doing all that. I know. That. But also, At what point do you want to talk about why the movie didn't get made? Well, one thing, I'll start the conversation with this, is that I was naive, personally, yeah. and found out later, maybe from the late, great Brad Gray, he's got like 10 things at all times. So, right. uh, he has multiple, multiple projects. Well, but yeah. I was, I didn't really realize how, you know, we were not necessarily on the top of the list, but we might've got made, but I was probably thinking more like maybe had 
two projects or three. Well, what I what I like to do massive. too is I have like five projects lined up for myself. And what I do is it depends on you know what I'm looking for. We're not talking point. about yard work, Kevin. Oh, I see. I thought you were. Is this one of your projects right now? <laughs> no, no, it's raking leaves and shoveling. This doesn't count as a project. Yeah. I'm screwed. Shit. Jesus. But in retrospect, isn't it? I mean, there are other reasons too. But he, well, he always movie stars, huge movie stars like The Rock doesn't have like just two. No, but I remember a specific phone call that, like, I got to talk to his. This was there a guy named Lou? Do you guys anybody remember? Like like his manager was named Lou, and the guy tells me that uh, because so while we were waiting, Last Action Hero came out and Mm -hmm. kind of bombed. And Last Action Hero, he didn't play himself, but he played. It was a tongue in cheek kind par- of. Yeah. He parodied. He parodied himself himself as an action yeah. hero. As an action hero, mm-hmm. and uh, Lou basically said that Arnold. It was almost like you know, this proves the law. That you, you can't do yourself. I'll never do myself in the movie again. Right, right. That was no last the action, lesson that he took from that. At the time, we hmm. heard that because Last Action Hero came out. I don't know if it came out while we were writing it. I, th- I think but it was came he, out. He was a while developing later. that then while yes, he was talking yeah, to us was. about this script. Yes, yeah. he was. So it that seems like it was an and or. If we'd gotten to it first, maybe it would have got mm-hmm. made. Then we would have been, you never to make fun of yourself. <laughs> yeah. After 30 minutes. It was or that, or if ours had been a hit, then he would have just, you always make fun of yourself. <laughs> you <I'm> only <laughs> make fun of yourself. <laughs> I play myself every time. There must be buttock stores in every movie I make. <laughs> uh, I mean, he really was, he was the biggest, like, muscular guy. Like, now they got so many action stars like that. You know, they got... Rock. No, but skinny actors, skinny movie day. stars get incredibly pumped up now. Yeah, they do. Like Jake Clickenhall or just normal Clickenhall. guys. Clickenhall. <laughs> Clickenhall. Clickenheimer. And his brother, Clickenheimer. Yeah. But, uh, he, uh, Jake, love him, great actor. He's probably listening. Well, but because he was, they uh, all have to do superhero At a movies. normal frame, but then it's like, you yeah, know. I will say this. Have you seen Kumail? I mean. Oh, yeah, yeah. but totally. But I will say yeah. this. Uh, have you seen me? <laughs> Mazel. <laughs> Oops. If you're looking at the people that do a lot of them, I'm gonna that do the action movies mm-hmm. or the Marvel movies, they get uh, very cut. But Arnold was different. Arnold, at his peak, was massive in a way that none of these guys are. I mean, he really was. He's a legit bodybuilder. Yeah, yeah, he was a real bodybuilder. So The Rock no. might be bigger than Arnold, I think. Physically, and physically bigger? Bigger? at this point. I don't think so. Really? But Arnold not, was huge. Not Arnold, Arnold when he was, was a bodybuilder. Arnold was huge. Not the pumping iron Arnold. But I, I, I'd have to see him side by side in their prime. I'm going to say the, no, that Arnold was a bodybuilder. Arnold was a bodybuilder, body. though, and, well, and The Rock. Rock was a wrestler. I know. Yeah. I'm just, I, I just, I, I'll ask some gym rats about that. But I think he was also, you could be more reckless Whoops. about it then. But uh, here's something that everyone will find fascinating. No, I was going to do Bad Boys, because those guys always talk about it, even with me and Lovett. Yes. Yeah. So turned it down. But in the meantime, Simpson and Bruckheimer, I was going to play the Will Smith part, you know, and they said, yeah, we're going to get a trainer. We're going to add two inches to your chest. Good God. <laughs> to try to build me up to right. be like, I mean, Will Smith is like 6'4". <laughs> it's crazy. He's not 6'4". All right. Two and a half. But anyway, they even tried to do it to me. I graduated high school at this height at 125. It would have been a heavy lift, no pun intended. (laughs) But You know what I love is um, the insane commitment to the weightlifting thing, which even when you were describing them as being in this really, the thing that there wasn't much food to eat and it was hard to get weights. A weight is anything you can lift. (laughs) I love the stupidity (laughs) of- It's hard to get weights. There wasn't much money for weights. (laughs) It's like that. <laughs> that being a hardship. Yeah. <laughs> Weights have to be flown in to this impoverished area so people can bump up. All right, that does it for the second uh, episode of Hans and Franz, The Girly Man Dilemma. This is the table read. We're bringing this magical script from 1991 to life with uh, Dana Carvey, Kevin Neal, and Robert Smigel and myself. So stick around for the next episode where things really heat up. We never even had a, a table read for the original. No, we writing. didn't. That no. would have been fun. Wow. Couldn't afford a table. We had gotten Could have Arnold punched it up. For that. Maybe if Arnold had just come to a table read and heard the laughs, he would have yeah. got a time machine.